Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 2008 Coenzeg CC GT and this has 1052 horsepower, 710 pounds feet of torque from its 5 litre supercharged V8 engine. The car itself now weighs 2385 pounds, now has all wheel drive, off-road tyres and off-road suspension and it can only not 16 2.572 seconds, not to 104.370 seconds and going to a top speed of 238 miles an hour. So obviously we've had some track orientated vehicles out on this series before, some have done really rather well, uh, as well as obviously some have been uh, supercars and hypercars that have done really well as well, but this is probably the more track orientated version of a car that we've had on this series with its roll cage and fixed rear wing and a front splitter, so let's see what it can do, and uh, yeah. See if it can uh, match the uh, more off-road orientated vehicles, because obviously this is purely meant for the track. Don't even think it was ever meant for the road, even. So, uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see what a fully fledged track and uh, race car can do on this series. Because obviously, you know, like I said, it's not meant for this kind of thing. I'm also dealing with all-wheel drive, more power than it had originally. But it does have the handling in normal circumstances, which should hopefully filter through to this off-road course. It'd be a shame if it didn't, but it should hopefully do so. And it, at the end of the day, it's don't weigh all that much, and it's got more than a thousand horsepower. So, uh, yeah, I have somewhat high hopes for this, but as we have seen with numerous of cars of all the types of varieties with uh, expectations can be exceeded massively or underwhelmed so uh, let's get a good rate of speed down there nearly 170 miles an hour should deal with this gravelly surface more better than the um, mud This is obviously far more similar to a normal road than uh, the wood generally is. But it is expectedly uncontrollable in areas, considering the kind of car it is and what it's dealing with. Really quick across the finish line there, 186 miles an hour, and a time of, wow, that is unexpectedly quick. Not the quickest, but at 1 minute 59.546 seconds, it is only the fifth car to get below the two minute mark, and only uh, the uh, fifth non-off-road vehicle to get under the two minute mark as well, beating the uh, Toyota Land Cruiser Arctic Trucks 8037. The uh, Bugatti Devo, so it's actually the uh, and the ATS GT, so it's oh and the uh, McLaren F1 GT. I didn't realise how low the time was. So yeah, it's actually the the second quickest car that we've had on this series. Doesn't quite manage to beat the Porsche 911 GT1 Strasse ver version because uh, that is uh, only a, that is a time of 1 minute 56.109. So it's still. That car's still got to go three and a half seconds nearly enough on this car. But to be second place when it's a fully fledged track car, like I said, it's got a fixed rear wing, a front spudder, it's got very low suspension, it's got a roll cage, it's been stripped out so it's lighter than the standard version. It is all kind of like, you know, earmarking towards not being all that quick, and yet it's the second quickest car that we've had on this series. Only just in comparison to the McLaren F1 GT, but just is still nonetheless a a win over that car, so yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, it's also beating the Porsche 20, the Peugeot 205 Rally, the Porsche 968 Turbo S, Ford GT40 Mark 1, Ferrari Portofino, Holden VL Commodore, the Toyota Hilux Arctic Trucks AT38, the Porsche 718 RS60, and the Zenvo TSRS. So uh, yeah, incredibly surprised by that because it didn't actually feel all that quick. We obviously did get up to high rates of speed at some parts, uh, and yeah, but apart from that, Felt like it was hitting the rev limit a, a fair bit often, didn't feel all that quick for the corners. But yeah, there we go. Surprise of the uh, week, quite frankly, for me because uh, yeah, I really wasn't expecting it to be that quick. And uh, yeah, for the top five to be completely consisting of mid engine cars, uh, 
with a few of them being obviously track orientated is a, a, a massive surprise for this series to be honest certainly wasn't what I was expecting nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye